Nixon's women. Deke must <laughs> recruit female astronauts after Russia lands a woman on the moon. Not a whaler, but a woman. Mm-hmm. 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 It's a good way to end the ep- this episode, the second episode with this, and then you see the fallout, and it changes, well, it changes history, and it changes yeah. maybe what you thought what was going to happen. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see it coming. Right. I didn't see it well, coming. No one did. And yeah. so, yeah, and when it when it happened, like in the you know in the next episode, and when it's called Nixon's Women, and I'm like, yeah, of course they have to respond because that's what would happen in real life, like the. The government or whatever would be like, well, we've got to do that as well now. Like, um, and there'd be backlash from your, you know, from from your people basically in the country. There'd be backlash and be like, why are we not doing that? And so then they're all focused on just making up a team and getting women together. And I love the fact that the guy with the glasses or whatever, he works for Nixon. Thomas Paine. Like, the heads. Yeah. Are, yeah, yeah. He's just like, you have to do this. And the, I think, is it Deke yeah, or whatever? Yeah. He's just like, I can't just you know strap a woman into a rocket and send her to the moon you know it's just it's not that easy they have to go through training they have to go through everything that the guys are going through you can see that well in my in time my interpretation deke is very sort of neutral he's sort of like lawful neutral where he just Mm -hmm. wants to follow the spirit of the rules to make sure that it is the best person for the job because he believes in this meritocracy idea Whereas Thomas Paine yeah. is like, listen, Nixon needs a, listen, Nixon needs this, Nixon needs that. It needs publicity. It needs good vibes, basically. So, yeah, stop, stop messing with the system. Just get the blonde on television, right, in a red, white, and blue yeah. astronaut outfit, and that's it. Don't have to worry about it. Don't have to take it seriously. <laughs> yeah, it's it's amazing. But that's how they'd be like as well. I I find it crazy oh, yeah. to look at, and they would completely be like that. There's a there's a subset of Twitter users or ex users who won't watch the show because they say the episode like this is pandering to gender identity. No, when I, it, I didn't find it. It's that. actually just telling you in a very cynical sense how people will even today, right now, are using gender mm. for their own ulterior motives. And they don't really care yeah. about, you know, race race issues or gender issues. They just want something that they think will sell. Yeah. And this episode just like mwah, just plays yeah, on that yeah. perfectly. I've never got any of that from the show. I've never got like, you know, the message of like women empowerment or anything like that, or like pandering to an audience. I d- I've not got that yet, which is good and refreshing when I'm watching something now these days. It's just, it's really We're good. both sensitive to this, aren't we, Adam? So <laughs> it's because you you hit over the head of it in everything you watch these days, man. That's right. You totally are. All true. <laughs> but this one, mm. this one hits you over the head, but in a very different way because they're telling you this is the reason why. And we know the reason why, yeah. because the Russians are just better than them. And they don't want mm. to be seen as anything less than the, you know, the Soviet Republic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In real life, the remaining Saturn Vs that they talk about were repurposed for Skylab because they, they didn't know what else to do with those rockets once they'd gone to the moon a few times and played golf or yeah. whatever. They, they were like, eh, we don't know what to do. Let's just make, let's go with Skylab. But here they're like, no, let's put more money into it. And now we've got to keep sending more people. So that that laziness or, or the mm. fact that that overachieving sense of spirit that the Americans had in real life yeah. here is now sort of redirected into something that is now going to perpetuate the, the arms race or the space race. Yeah. yeah, it's brilliant that the focus was on establishing a moon base. So they put all their resources into that and the, four, the team's talking about it before the pain comes in. And then he's just like, we need women on the moon. And he's just like, we're talking about this. So then they've got a shift focus and it's just completely ridiculous. Right. It's more important just for the publicity. Yeah. Just so Nixon can get his, get his sweet, re-election. Sweet votes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But did you notice that on the ground level, did you believe that Gordo was against his wife? Getting, oh, is that episode three? Yeah, we're on episode three. Yeah, yeah. did you when she yeah, gets yeah. when she gets offered the position? Did you think Gordo's interest in her was genuine or, or very supportive? I was surprised. I thought he was going to be against it, and then he was for it, kind of thing. But obviously, he got offered a place on fifteen. So right, but he he says it's not because of fifteen. It's because I genuinely support you. Did oh you yeah, believe yeah. him even That's though what... he's cheated on her. Uh, I yeah, I think I did believe him. Even though he, he cheated, I don't know. I feel like he is 
a good guy because he hasn't like done anything malicious to her. Like, no, not majorly <laughs> malicious. Like, I thought there was one stage where he got drunk and I thought he was going to hit her, start beating her. Oh, well. But, but he never did that. And I thought, oh, well, that's that's what I mean. So I thought, okay, this guy's not that bad, even though he has. But I think I I, I feel like that's more of the probably the culture and the lifestyle back then. I know it's easy to sort of like say they say that and people were like, well, like that's not still doesn't make it right. And it doesn't make it right. But I feel like it was the the culture and the nature of things back then where uh, not acceptable, but it's kind of like you would expect that's kind of what it is. And that's, the women themselves, I think the wives, I, I, they, they sort of knew as well. Like, right. That's what they do when they're off gallivanting at different bases and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I I go into this episode and I've watched it a few times and I always see Gordo as being genuine like for some reason maybe out of guilt because he knows he made a mistake but he's genuinely mm-hmm. supporting her and she doubts him in these first few episodes she's doubting yeah. him well I know that's not I don't want to spoil anything but she's got a level of doubt yeah. on him which is justified like, like just, but it doesn't yeah, it's justified yeah it's justified yeah but for me, as a guy, I think, I think he's being the best husband possible in that particular moment. Obviously, sleeping with someone else and letting yeah. them flush the toilet, you know, that, that's not what I'm, that's the opposite of what I've just said. But in that particular moment, taken away from the context, he's like, mm. he's like great. Whereas it's Karen who has a worse mm. reaction to, mm. to uh, Tracy's uh, sort of uh, new role. Do you know? Do you understand why? Do you understand why she's upset? I, I kind of understand why. I feel like she knows her place. She's the type of woman that's like, I, I am this type of wife. We have an established group of wives that have like astronaut husbands or whatever, and to have someone go outside that box and to do other things that men are doing, I think she finds that either like threatening and also a little bit insulting to what she is basically, and it's yeah, it's kind of like a bit of a slap in the face of like. Well, no, she can't do that. Your job, you, you, you know, you're the man. You're, you do all this, and there's far too much to know about what you do. She can't possibly do what you do and have the responsibility and have all that. You can't. She can't. So I think she's very angry about that and a little bit bitter as well, even though it's a friend. So it's, yeah, it's it, very strange. But it's also it's like yeah, it's understandable. That's that's how she is. With Karen, her role, she's at the top. The astronauts are the, basically the top of their game. They're world famous, mm. and she's an astronaut's wife. So she's on this mm. level, just like all the other women. And then she's now upset that Tracy has sort of superseded that level by being a mother and an astronaut. It's compounded yeah. her abilities, and then she feels insecure, and that's why she's upset. And if, at first, I didn't, I didn't really look into it that deeply. I just thought, oh, she's just, yeah, she's yeah. just jelly. But then, no, there's, there's interesting gender dynamics here where even men will shit on women, and women... Mm will even go further to shit on themselves. <laughs> you feel it as well in one scene, I think it was this episode, where she comes home and uh, Karen's looking after her kids. Yes. And she comes and she's wearing her overalls and she looks like she's the, the, the man role and that Karen's like the stay-at-home wife and you really feel that. And I think it's purposely done on screen oh, yeah. to sort of show that. And it's like, wow, look at that. And, That's and she's doubling up. Karen is doubling up on the families that she's looking after. So she's doing yeah. two jobs. <laughs> yeah. In a way. She's looking after three boys and she knows, just like she knows Ed's career, she knows what the boys, those two boys want as well. Yeah. So she is like a, a second mother doing two mothering jobs. It's, yeah. it's so layered with nuance. You don't have to explain it at all, right? This is what you yeah. get when you have old school writers who, who've lived a little bit. Not, mm. oh, like, in, like they keep doing in Marvel now. Oh, I like her. It's like, okay, yeah. thanks. We, we, you couldn't have just like shown us things that we could like about you. You have to tell us that she's like a bull. Yeah. <laughs> again, again, hitting us over the head with stupid crap. That's true. Did you notice some bad CGI in this, 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 this episode? The plane landing and the smoke. Oh, yeah, that one bit, I suppose. Like, I was going to say oof. to you like how good looking the show is, actually. But then, yeah, that one bit, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the space stuff looks great. It's just... Mm. What they do actually on the planet is like smoke. That's not real smoke. What's that? <laughs> Don't I, look too hard at that bit. Yeah. I, I want to let you know that the woman who landed on the moon in the, the end of episode two is not a real person. 
because they say her name is Anastasia Belikova. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. But in real life, there was a woman who went into space, obviously not the moon, because it's at the mm. moment, it, it's only it's literally a man cave, the moon is. But the, mm. there was a real woman who went into space, and her name was Valentina Tereshkova. Belikova, Tereshkova. And right. I thought to myself, it's strange that they didn't link her into the story because you've got real life American people, yeah. but not this Russian person. But then I looked at the date and actually she went into space in 1963. So it's much earlier. It was oh, even wow. before the moon landings. But at the same time, you could have just included her as being the first woman in space and then boom, the first woman on the moon. You could have, but they didn't. And my note here is, yeah, my notes here is that basically you could have had her doing a second achievement this, mm, this woman. Yeah. And yeah. at the same time, the USA didn't give a shit that a woman went into space in real life now because they didn't, they didn't allow women still, even with the Mercury 13 program, they, yeah. they didn't change their minds. So in, in, another, in another alternate reality, maybe America wouldn't have done anything if they were a little bit more sort of, what's the word, uh, misogynist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they didn't give a shit. Like, oh, I don't care. Right. That's all I really have to say in this episode that we can touch on. I don't know if you've got anything else. I'm um, just trying to remember anything significant that what else that happened. Apart from obviously Nixon's women. The, 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 There's some good di- in well, character dynamics, you know, the playing off each other because of the situation. As we, Yeah, it's really good. The only thing that like takes you out a little bit is like every single woman is like pretty much beautiful and hot. <laughs> you got a problem with that? You gay, bro. I'm not, I've not got an issue with it, but it kind of like... <laughs> I mean, they, I think that also the show does everything it can to like, they sort of make them not look as good. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you've seen episode four, which we can get into, but they, they, they pretend that Molly is not an attractive woman. Mm, right? Yeah, stuff crazy like that, which is mad, but yeah, that's the only thing really that I sort of like, it sort of, I don't know, takes away a little bit. Okay. Well, speaking of taken away, another segue into episode four, one of the one of those beautiful women die. <laughs> who did you think know, who did man. you think was gonna die before you found out it was Patty? I knew it wasn't like Gordo's wife. I just well, no. Can't they, be. They've put him there in the in the car and I thought they've they've done that as for a dramatic sort of yeah. effect. Sort of like, oh it could be her and it's like it's not gonna be her. And then Yeah, I was surprised it was her friend. It was the I've got a name now, I'm not good with these names. Tracy man. Ellen? Tracy. Molly. Is it is it is it the one who's like? Is it Molly? I think Molly's the like the, the one who's the first in everything, isn't she? Yeah, Molly's the, yeah the older lady from the Mercury Thirteen yeah. program. Yeah, yeah, she's the one who's like basically a badass and can do everything. Yeah, and her mate is like always coming second behind her. But this was a really good episode to showcase the training and all the things they have to do and the women and all the hard work they have to do to even get to be an astronaut, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I enjoyed this a lot. You're talking about episode four now. Yeah, okay, episode four, right. yeah. 